What's up, Big V? Welcome back to our Division 1 and Division 2 reviews after some incredible, incredible uh, country grand final spectacles. We had three out of the four uh, were all played in the country, the fourth being at Altona, and every single one of them did a fantastic job as we dive straight into Division 1 men, Shepparton v RMIT, uh, over at Shepparton, uh, and it was an amazing game, Shepparton. Uh, the 2023 champions of Division One men. They did a fantastic job, uh, 79 to 66, Mark. Yeah, it's a um, – what a game this one was and, and well-deserved to Shepard and who have been sort of that – the benchmark team all year, I think, um, if you ask majority um, majority of the teams in Division One, they've been the benchmark team all year. And um, after falling short last year against Bellarine um, on their home floor, they've managed to get it done here against RMIT and – and um, yeah, that crowd, it looked it looked crazy um, at Shepparton. The, it was a sold out house. Uh, they were turning people away, sending them to the live stream um, so they could tune in. But uh, well done to Shepparton on hosting it and well done on a great win. Who were the stars for us, Ted? I mean, four of their five starters finished in double figures. No one was you know, incredibly outstanding. Derek Murphy had 21 uh, to go with his 15 rebounds. So he, you would probably say he was uh, the player of the game starring as, as the MVP yep. uh, voted by the referees after the game. So massive congratulations uh, to him. We also had Lockie Kego uh, with a very nice, healthy double-double, 14 points to go with his 13 rebounds. This team is just a defensive nightmare. RMIT known for their offensive onslaughts of, of coffee and steam, but they continue to hold this team to a low number, and they did it again. Yeah, they pretty much didn't let a team get over 70 for majority of the year, this Shepparton Gators team. And when you got guards, um, Bartlett and Kuiman, uh flirting with triple doubles as well to support those big double doubles from the bigger guys, it's a it's an impressive team effort by Shepparton. But, um, you know, let's all go and give a shout-out to RMIT, RMIT, who have had a great season. Um, it was, you know, Coffee was doing his thing, 24 points, nine rebounds, five assists, four steals, stuffing the stat sheet like he usually does. Probably just didn't have as much support. Um, Steen probably a little quieter than what he would have liked with 14 points, but um, it's that next piece which they were probably missing. Matt Spencer didn't shoot the ball um, very well, not, not to his usual sort of standards, and um, they're not a whole heap off the bench, you would probably say, Ted. Yeah, I agree. And, and and to be honest, like the the RMIT team do play a lot of their offense out of coffee. Yeah. You know, so there is a lot of weight that he puts on his shoulders himself. Um, and a huge credit to him because he, he does outperform pretty much everyone in, uh, in this league yeah. personally. So, um, you know, that, that does come uh, hand in hand. But no, you are absolutely right. Daniel Sam probably did hope for a bit of a better game uh, there. But, you know, it is what it is there. Uh, Shepard did a fantastic job to, to scout them well enough and, and, and make things a bit too difficult. But yeah, we'll move on to our Division One women as Ballerine uh, got the championship win. Uh, sorry, Warnable got the championship win over Ballerine, sixty four to fifty eight. Now I was at this game personally, Mike, and Warnable put on an absolute show. It was incredible. We had to put out extra seating because there were just that many people. Uh, in line outside. They did a fantastic job. Huge, huge credit uh, to the wonderful staff. Yeah, I think it's a, um, if anybody needs to know what a game day experience is like, they need to head to some of these country teams to do it. Do it really well. And, and I had the luxury of going to the wonderful pink round earlier in the season. And, and likewise, it was a huge crowd and a, uh, a f fantastic game day experience put on by the uh, wonderful Basketball Association down there. Absolutely. They are, uh, look, this was, an insane split between the two of them because uh, they played four games in a regular season, or sorry, three games in a regular season, once in finals, and they were split two and two. And Bellarine came into this game and I think it was a 14 to two uh, start for the wow. Bellarine Storm. They, they shot the absolute piss. Um, it was an incredible start by Bellarine, but Warnable, you know, were consistent and, and they stuck with and got themselves back into the game. They got into a groove. Uh, Amy Wormold was, was quiet with just her, her four points, but influential. They they had to keep a sharp eye on her at all times. Yeah, uh, She was comfortable with, with serving the ball out and, and making plays, which she did consistently. And Dakota Crichton was, was just fantastic, really. At 20, 27 points and, and 10 rebounds. She found herself in amazing spots. She was physical offensively and defensively. She was 
running the floor, getting to the right spot, um, a huge credit to her as the, the MVP of the game. Yeah, and they, um, it's a really impressive one wall unit. They've got a, a healthy balance of a couple of veteran leaders um, and then a really youthful um, sort of lineup. So it's really going to be exciting watching one for years to come. And credit to Bellarine, they're a... Um, they have turned their year around, um, one of probably the most improved teams in the whole competition, finishing near the bottom of the D1 last or equal last um, last last season, to then turn around and, and head to the grand final. Um, Georgia Valley's been a brilliant pickup for them this year. And, you know, she, she still played well, 12 points to go with six boards and uh, a couple a few steals there. But uh, Chantel Hall with a double-double as well, 10 points and 12 rebounds. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was fantastic to see. Now, Division 2 men, it was Altona and Whittlesey over at Altona, uh, even though Whittlesey did finish on top of the ladder. Altona proving to be that team that Whittlesey just could not get over the line with. And it happened here again. Altona, the champions of Division 2 men, 97 to 94, Mark. You were at this game. Talk to me. Yeah, it was, a, it was huge. And, and Whittlesey looked like they had control the whole first half. The um, They just were comfortable. They got they got out by uh, ahead by double figures, and they did it did it all together really because they um, they all contributed. Gabe Evans was good, but he seemed to be suffering some cramp um, late in the game, so had to he, his minutes were reduced there. Any pickle juice? Um, yeah, and he was getting a bit of massage and strapping on the side as well. They were trying to do, trying to do anything to get him back out there. Jason Dirks had a brilliant game, um, just really composed. Pat Green was similar. Uh, you know, they both had eighteen and nineteen respectively. So. But a huge shout out to the young fellow off the bench, Max Dejanovic. He had had fourteen points, and he, he was just quite disruptive defensively. He ended up switching on to Adam Anderson. Now, didn't have the impact that Whittlesey would have loved, but Adam Anderson was just a level of blo- a class above. Effectively, forty one points on fifty four percent shooting. Does this? Uh, he just pretty much just steps back and fades, and no one can get within within any reach of him, and he shoots the ball really, really well. So he, he was grand final MVP, and rightfully so. And just a, also a quick shout-out to the Altona and Whittlesey crowds. They packed that joint out. Um, there was kids, there was adults. Everyone was getting into it. It was great sportsmanship from both teams, um, all very very much directed in a, in a positive light. But, um, yeah, what a spectacle that game really was. Fantastic. And Division 2 women here, we had effectively the two top teams here from uh, from Division 2 women. They were the best all year round. Uh, it was somewhat expected to see them both here in the grand final, and they put on, a, on an absolute show like we thought they would. Gippsland United, the champions of Division 2 women uh, over the Wallen Panthers, 89-72. to Gippsland just proved to be that team that was just too strong to beat uh, with regards to Wallen, uh, Kyla Collins being the amazing player that she is, uh, just unable to get it done uh, in this game. Yeah, and, you know, Col- Collins obviously worked hard all game, ended up in a bit of foul trouble as well, so that probably didn't help the Wallen girls. But yeah. um, good to see that Olivia Dalmau and, and Sarah Scott, um, they both they both performed really well and will be really happy with their games. And unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. They made a, a after giving up a big lead early-ish, they made a late run to make it a uh, more interesting game. But, mm. um, yeah, it, just wasn't, it wasn't to be, unfortunately. Absolutely. It just looked like that third quarter proved just a little bit too much for Wallen. Uh, Gibson coming out of the gate strong, 29-18 uh, to 18 third quarter. So, a massive congratulations to Gibson. Lauren Tuppen with a 25-10-8. and eight. A massive, massive performance. Mackenzie Miller, uh, 20.16 rebounds and nine assists. Uh, the MVP... Uh, for Division 2 women. Fantastic job. Uh, amazing crowd and atmosphere over in Gippsland. Massive, massive credit uh, to Gippsland and all of our country teams. They did a fantastic job uh, across the country here. That'll be all for our championship games. Uh, we'll catch you guys very soon.